Hey everyone, Patrick here. Today I thought I would take the time to take a look at a, the real fundamental basics of a 3.js scene. Uh, particularly, we're going to be looking at the HTML involved uh, and how we can kind of use JavaScript, CSS, and HTML all to combine to really uh, put, pull together a basic, basic 3.js scene. Uh, so you're if you're interested in learning the basics on it, this is kind of the tutorial for you. Uh, I've switched over to a WebStorm for an IDE environment. Uh, hopefully this will be a little bit easier for you all to read. Okay, so here is the basic markdown of our scene. Uh, and this is nearly almost completely pulled off the 3.js website. Uh, essentially we have the header, uh, which has the title of the page. Uh, we also have these styles, the style brackets. And in it, we're setting the margin to zero. Otherwise, we're going to have a 10 pixel uh, border surrounding the the web, uh, the actual uh, HTML document. Um, and you can kind of see that border. If you remove this, this right here, you'll get like a white border going around your entire HTML page. <clears throat> we also have the canvas, which, which we are specifying has a width of 100% and a height of 100%. We're then closing up those style brackets. Now, this can be actually an external uh, CSS style sheet that you can reference in here. And in it, I've shown you in other videos how you reference styles, uh, style sheets. But however, we're going to embed it directly in here. Uh, we also all, also have the option of embedding things in line. Uh, however, in the circumstance, we're not going to be doing that. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So you know, within the body tags, uh, at the very bottom, we're going to be calling our basic scripts. Okay. And our script source is going to be the CDN, the Content Distribution Network of 3.min.js. And the min stands for minified. Sometimes it's called uh, ugly. Uh, basically what it does is it strips out all of the spaces within it and makes a more compact file. However, uh, without any sort of mapping to it, it's very difficult to kind of troubleshoot a minified file. So you basically want to use that only on um, production environments and you want to typically stay away from it in development where you can actually kind of trace back the code and figure out what's going on. Okay, so the very first thing that we're doing um, is putting in this script tag uh, basically everything that's going to go into our 3.js scene. Uh, the first thing we're doing is we're initiating a global variable scene and we're setting it to new 3.scene. So 3 stands for this and then it's calling the function, um, it's calling the actual object scene, okay, and assigning it to this variable scene. Okay, so the next thing we're doing is creating a camera and it's a new 3 perspective camera. So this is, again is an object and it has these parameters that you're looking at right here which uh, pertain to the window it, the window inner width. Okay and this is a basic JavaScript call uh, which says that basically take the measurement of the inside width of the window um, and the measurement of the, of the window, the inside, the inner height of the window. Okay, and then these are our clipping uh, planes, variables right here. So point 0.1 uh, all the way up to 1,000. If you want to learn more about clipping, I would kind of experiment, uh, maybe experiment um, using Blender or something like that and set up a camera, set up an object, and kind of just futz around with the clipping in there. And that'll give you an idea how clipping works exactly. But basically, it just cuts off. Um, anything that is within, outside of the bounds of the clipping box. Okay, so in this case it's 0.1 all the way to 1,000. So if you have an object loading into the scene that's larger than 1,000, then part of it is going to get clipped off. Okay, our renderer, this is actually um, <clears throat> what we, uh, the WebGL renderer, this is actually what renders it to the screen, scene. So the scene itself, right here, this variable is everything that is contained that we create and, and add to it. The renderer is uh, what actually renders uh, everything onto the screen. Okay, and you can see right here we're setting the renderer, uh, setting the size of it using the renderer.setSize uh, property. Okay, next we have a call um, onto the document. This is a just plain old JavaScript call right here and this is saying the document body body is that tag right there append child that means that basically add this as a child of this parent body uh, renderer dom element okay 
So that's just going to be basically appending this renderer right here to the body right here. Okay. And then finally we have our geometry. So we have a variable for geometry, new 3.js, and the geometry is one by one by one. Okay, so that's X, Y, Z. All right, and then we have a material, which is a 3. Mesh basic material, and in it right now it is set to red. Uh, basically, this these hex values correspond to red, green, and then blue. Okay, is the final one. So zero zero represents uh, the that would be uh, zero zero would be the absence of any sort of color, and then the um, all the way up to FF, so it goes 0 through 9, and then A through FF. So you can actually uh, see the different brightnesses by um, fiddling around with those values right there and combining them in a different way. I did the calculation, it comes out to about 4096, I believe, different colors that are accessible. Could be wrong on that, but... Alright, so uh, var cube. Next, this is the actual object when we create the mesh out of it. So this basically right here is just creating the geometry. And the geometry is the faces and the vertices. And then the actually, um, when you create the mesh of it itself, you're adding the geometry and the materials together. And you're calling this object right here, the mesh object. And that's making the cube right here and then all we're doing is just adding that scene we're adding scene calling the um, function scene dot add uh, dot cube and again that's scene right here uh, so that's a this scene right is an object and that object has within it a function called add and that adds it right there okay and then right here you can see where, that we're setting the camera position. So again, we've created the camera up here. The camera has a property position, and that position is available to us because it was written using this dot notation. Um, so that, that means that we can actually affect it, and we're affecting it by moving it. We're setting the z-axis equal to 5, okay? And by default, the camera will point directly at 0 um, zero zero in your scene. Okay. Next, we're calling the uh, we're creating we're do, running the function this function right here, and uh, we're setting it equal to this variable right here, and that this is going to return. I believe the term is return a function as an argument, and that's how that works. I could be wrong on this one again. Um, Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I totally spaced out. I screwed that up. Uh, essentially, what we're doing is we're so we're creating this function render, and what that is doing is a recursive function, and what that means is that it keeps calling itself, and what it's going to do right now is is it's going to call itself right here, and it's going to run this request animation frame which is a JavaScript feature that just means basically when the window is open and in front of you on the screen, um, run it 30 times a second, I believe, or something like that. It could be 60 times a second. Um, and right here you can see we're doing putting a little rotation on the cube. And then our renderer, WebGL render, we're calling this function render, and we're sending it the scene and the camera, and it's doing all the magic for us. Okay, and then since, again, this is recursive, so we're just going to call render right down here at the very bottom. So this means basically on page load, call this function. Okay, and it's going to call this function, which is going to call this function, which is going to call this. It's going to go through the loop again and again and again and again and again and keep rendering. Okay, now, uh, in the past I have used... Oops. In the past I have used um, WAMP in order to run some of this stuff. Um, and you use a, you basically you need a server whenever you're working with uh, 3.js because uh, sometimes there's like cross origin problems and stuff. So if you just are looking at the file itself, the browser is not going to allow you uh, to get to get access to everything without actually having a server running sometimes. 
Uh, so you need to actually serve up the files. So it's important to always have a server running uh, whenever you're working with any of these things. Um, anyways, I'm going to be running a node server. So and and if you guys are interested, I can go through a tutorial on how to do this as well. Um, it's basically a command line server as opposed to the uh, WAMP server. It's pretty easy to set up, but all right. So I'm going to sign in a port. That's what the P is seven seven seven, and run that. And now I have my command line server. I come back over here. I go to localhost, and then go to that port. I'm going to have my P six C. Okay. So real quick, um, cube has a whole bunch of properties that we can assign to it. For example, we could affect the scale right here. So if we wanted to actually change this this property, we could do so and change it by scale. And try not to delete everything when we do that, but just so you can see, save, refresh on this, and you will see now. Uh, it's still spinning our scale changes and again I mentioned before how you could kind of fiddle around with these colors any which way so if I wanted to I can move these colors over here hit save now refresh there's your green remember I said it goes RGB so the final one put it down at the end hit save refresh and that should be blue but it's not let me try it again there we go all right so now you see our blue and then we can combine these. So red, and blue, and green will give you that kind of cyan color. Okay, and then we can combine, we can move this over here. Let's save. What color do we get? We get that magenta. And then our final one, move this over here. Hit refresh, and you get your yellow. So you see that goes RGB, um, red, green, blue, whereas when you combine these, you get the uh, cyan, magenta, yellow. So just a little bit of interesting information to show you. All right, cool. So um, I don't think there's a whole lot more to go over within this scene, uh, but I think this is, this is good and covers a lot of stuff. Anyways, thank you again for watching. I hope this clears up a lot of questions that you may have had uh, when it comes to 3.js. Uh, if you have any more questions, just feel free to post in the comments, and I'll try and know, uh, get, get back to you as soon as I can. Anyways, I'll post this also up on CodePen so you guys can uh, play around with it. Thanks again for watching, and don't forget, forget to subscribe. Hey.